What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. The 40 terabyte Shinku Hadouken bar top. It just keeps getting better and better. Ladies and gentlemen, we have double aim track guns. So if you guys remember, there's a video back when I was doing Wiimotes for this build. And unfortunately, the Wiimotes were a nightmare. I don't know what the issue is to exactly pinpoint it. I didn't use a real Mayflash bar. Um, that's the real way to do kind of Wiimotes on a PC. I didn't do that. We used a knockoff USB flash bar and I also have fake Wiimotes. And I just had a, I kept getting like this disconnect issue. But the big thing was that I was using a program called Touch Mode. And it totally butchered my whole hyperspin setup. Uh, the only way to make it not butcher it is that you had to uninstall the touch mode driver It was just too much of a headache. The touch mode basically recognizes players one to four It then made my arcade sticks players five and six. It was just a huge nightmare so We ditched the idea and basically I did suggest to Eugene because he does want the light guns Let's stick with what everyone usually gets and that's the aim track guns by Ultimark Ultimark has been around for so long. I've never personally used them, but from reading on how easy it is to set up, I'm gonna put air quotes on easy because it's not easy. But as far as like the way the PC recognizes it and drivers, you literally plug it in and it's good to go. It literally looks like a mouse. So I suggested the double Ultimark aim track guns. Um, unfortunately, with this whole pandemic, it was very difficult. They were basically sold out. Um, but finally, got a hold of them. We got two black ones. But real quick, let me show you what we did to the cabinet. So again, excuse where the bar top is. It's always next to my desk, but uh, I'm, this is like test bench mode. You'll see a couple wires on the floor. But again, just to real quick go over it, the Ultimark guns again have been on the, they've been on the market for a long time. Uh, mostly when MAM Arcade originally started. The only downside, yes, it does have this kind of wire. It's a long USB wire. Um, but in all honesty, these things right now, as far as, how they work it's flawless so now the big thing is that yes we have two usbs really three because we do have the sensor bar i'll talk about the sensor bar in a second but now oh how is eugene going to connect the usbs without going to the back eugene had a great idea we ordered it basically i did put in the front the double usb hidden compartment so that wasn't there drilled into the plexiglass perfect fit it's the same size as an arcade button awesome stuff so he does now have access to the usbs it's perfect it's awesome and it looks great as far as the motherboard inside there's one usb that's always in and that is the sensor bar i'm going to clean up as far as wiring i might either keep it straight or try to go to the side i think honestly i'm going to try to keep it as straight as possible but i've done so many testings the bar on top is just the easiest way i did try to put it actually behind the screen here like behind the plexi but the ir it wouldn't read it i didn't want any nightmares we're gonna have to deal with it but it doesn't look that bad i mean again you do have the speaker mount here but as far as adding like this bar it looks nice i'll be honest it's not noticeable you really don't notice it now the big plus side as far as the touch mode and the may flash bar you only need one bar for four guns. So that's like a no brainer. There's no switching modes like the May Flash would do. This is awesome, like this is perfect. One bar, that's it. I was actually gonna put it here underneath, but then I had to drill it. I didn't wanna get like too dirty and dusty. And also I did think about Eugene, cause he did say that he might be kind of broadcasting up to a bigger screen. So he could always, if anything, take off the double sided tape and then put it on top of the screen, and now you're gonna be able to use a big screen with the gun. So as far as a cabinet overview, we put the double USBs in front. We do have the double aim tracks. Yes, they do come with a cord, but honestly, it's not that bad. Once you kind of figure out the, the distance that you could go, you kind of just bunch it up, and it's good. I'll be honest though, with the USB wires, it does add a little bit weight that kind of gives you the realism to a gun. These are not the recoil guns. Those were too expensive for no reason. Recoil guns, they burn out after a couple months. Pointless. These guns right now, so far, they're great. I've been trying to figure out how I'm gonna tape this. Uh, what I'll basically do is I will kind of put like the stand next to me and I'll basically try to get like, you know, me playing it with the guns and then I'll do maybe the screen grab. Uh, you know, I'm not too sure exactly how I wanna do it to show it off, but definitely right now we are gonna look at 
Techno Parrot, and the shooting games. Okay, so right now I'm running Transformers. I'm trying to figure out how to shoot this. I'd rather probably just shoot one game that doesn't need like a reload button. Um, just to show you that the aim tracks do work. Um, also great as far as these coins, they do work with the arcade button, so it's really awesome. And the star buttons work. So if I, I'm gonna do right now player one alone, and then I'll, I'll bring in player two. So player one start. I have the gun marked. Player one is white. Do I really have to go through the device? So you can see like my red cross there, hopefully. And again, I'll do a screen grab to show you. I'm pretty far. I mean, you could be anywhere you want, but the big thing is that you do need to calibrate the guns no matter what. So. Like I said, this game doesn't have any reload. Kind of like just unlimited gun. And again, the trigger does work. You can see the red. And this game, I mean, any shooting game, it does need the gun for this. So this is amazing. It's great. But again, a kind of pain in the ass to get it set up. So like right now, I'll bring in player two. And you can see my crosshairs. Okay, so I put the camera over my shoulder. Just again, I'd rather do a screen grab, but just so you guys can see it. I'm looking at the camera holding. Yeah, you can see. So again, with this game, there's no reload button. There is a switch button that you have to hit at one point. But other than that, that's set to either the left one. As you can see, it's also set to the fire button. It's great. I mean, I'll be honest, the weight of these guns, it's great. And again, even with the USB kind of bringing me down a little bit, it's not that bad. It really feels good. And honestly, your arm could get tired. So, I mean, you could hold it straight out. You could bring it like hip fire if you want, go up top. It's just so clean. You could definitely see the crosshair how clean it is. All right guys, so real quick, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set this up in a unique way. I basically have the screen grab going. I have the monitor kind of by, behind you guys, but I do have the bar top in the center here. So my aim might be a little bit off, but I do want to go into like how to launch hyperspin and basically make it work. You gotta keep in mind that we are asking this computer and these builds to do a lot of things, not to mention we're adding more controllers. So the big thing is that hyperspin might get confused um, let's say for example, if I launch hyperspin right now with the guns plugged in, the joysticks won't work, the arcade sticks won't work. Basically what happens is that joy to key launches and you know, usually it recognizes the joysticks as players one and two because those are always plugged in. But once you introduce another like USB, it might kick the joysticks to be players three and four if anything. So right now the big thing is I'm gonna launch hyperspin and basically, once the screen goes black, I'm going to put in uh, the guns now. So I'm literally going to plug in the guns. And again, big thing right now is that once I put Hyperspin to launch without the guns, the controls, the arcade sticks, will always be now players one and two as of now. So right now, basically, I'm using the arcade stick. I am able to go into it, press enter, and basically I'm going to launch up first um, Transformers. Cause you guys are doing like an over the shoulder kind of view, so I'd rather do it correctly. So green button press, we got CMD loaded. And basically again, once you see that CMD load up, you'll know it's good. So I'm gonna launch this game first with just one gun, uh, and then I'll do two guns on that. Uh, just wanna make sure my levels are good. You would be shocked. I shot this like three times and I accidentally pressed stream on the first two times. So we're doing this again. Uh, so right now again, I do have the arcade button still hooked up, so I'm able to enter coins with the arcade sticks. I'm gonna press start. Wait, Sam. Just wanna make sure again I'm not streaming. Yeah. So again, I got player one gun lined up, and as you can see, we are good to go again. I'm looking kind of at you guys, but I'm pointing straight ahead. That's just you know how I have the bar top set up. I don't want to take the IR bar off and mess with double edge case. I'd rather you need to do that on his end. This game is just a game that you can literally just hold the trigger down. So as you can see right now, I am holding the trigger down. 
you could either just shoot away. Big thing was that when I was using the Ultimar, after five seconds of pulling down the trigger, it would actually go into calibration mode. So you gotta do a couple of things to make sure that doesn't happen. And again, right now it's pretty cool so you can you know, play the game whatever you want. You wanna go extended arm, you wanna go two-handed. Again, it's pretty cool. Just to my other side, I do like you know, to keep things real. I got a lot of people that message on YouTube and say, hey, like, you know, I appreciate you being real and showing what really could be possible because I've yet to find a build or a drive that's just flow. There's no such thing. We keep adding stuff. We, we were good before with our tape sticks. Now we added the guns. And again, there's a couple of steps you have to take to let that gun work. I'm gonna bring in player two. So again, we got blue. Where is my crosshair? There it is. And again, player one. So pink and blue, red and blue. So again, as you can see, and this is pretty cool because if you actually get like the crosshairs together, it kind of makes like this kind of stronger shot. So like I said, I do read your comments, guys. I do comment. Uh, the YouTube app on my phone kind of sucks because I could see your first comment, but then I can't see if you reply to it. Uh, so I guess kind of annoying. I best thing is to definitely shoot you know a message to me on like Instagram, at Vic underscore VP. I always answer that, that's my main account. So keep that in mind. So again, people do mention me say, hey Vic, I like that you're serious, I like that you're real, you show the flaw, you show it. Because again, that's just how it is. Other people that make cabinets, I, people just say like, Vic, they don't even have videos. I'm like, yeah, you know, they want to sell you something that could be flawless. In all honesty, even my drive right now, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not gonna be flawless. I'm gonna call it at maybe 95% flawless. But, you know, I don't want to jinx myself. I don't want to give myself a bad breath. It's just, you know, something's break. Again, right now we are, you know, adding guns. We are adding controls. And like I said, you have to kind of, you know, keep in mind how the system was created. So, again, right now, if I start hyperspin with the guns plugged in, the control sticks won't work. Then what's going to happen is we're going to say, hey, big, my control sticks don't work, and you got to go through the whole phase. Uh, but in all honesty, like I said, if you are looking to play a specific game, you know, right now if you woke up, hey, it's Saturday, and I want to play some Transformers, you'll know that when you launch Hyperspin, after you launch it, then you'll bring in your guns and plug them in. So what's kind of cool right now, though, is that I could escape. And basically, with the arcade sticks, they are now really players three and four. So I could leave the, the guns in, but I still have control on Hyperspin. Um, so the next thing I do want to do is House of the Dead. So I'm going to launch the House of the Dead. And as you can see, we get the CMD. The House of the Dead, this game utilizes the trigger and the two red buttons. You have to actually reload on this. So it's going to be difficult for me to do like double gun action, but I'll still do player one and two just to show it. So again, I had the gun still plugged in um, and we're basically good to go. We're A-OK -okay on that. Uh, again, we are utilizing the arcade sticks for the coin, so let's get a little bit of a yell. I'm gonna do just one player for now. These are all the rather cut the, the cutscenes. There is no crosshair on this, so as you can see, like you know, you kind of just have like the splurt going on. There's no crosshair, but again, I am utilizing the third button as a reload. So again, reload, as you can see it there. That's what kind of sucks about games that don't have crosshairs. You kind of just, not lose it, but again, in my situation, you can see me, I'm literally kind of going on a diagonal. So, my player one just died, so I'm gonna bring in player two, just to show you that they do work. So again, this game you do need like two hands, and I do have the left set to grenade toss. In this game, only this part has this weird kind of shader issue. But again, Techno Power, once it goes past this kind of screen, you'll be set. So as you can see, we're back. I'm gonna throw a grenade once this kind of door opens. So throwing a grenade, we just threw it. Throwing another one, we just threw it. We gotta reload, getting eaten. I'm on the floor. <laughs> and you can see on the right, the grenades are gone. So again, using Demule Shooter with Techno Parrot, and again, this is just, it's just so much stuff to set up. 
you gotta set up a command line. Then I had to set up, the issue I was having was that I had to set up the command line to exit. Uh, it's, it's not easy, this stuff is not easy. And again, I appreciate you guys commenting and watching. Again, you could always comment. Uh, I will always comment back. I always look at the messages and such, so. Now that I'm just actually pushed the start button on that. But for right now, gotta reload. I'm dead. So that is House of the Dead. We're gonna exit out. So again, I exited out. Technically, my Arcade 6 is player 3. So I am still able to kind of go about. Luigi's Mansion, I, I have yet to find a fix for that. We're gonna launch that outside. I'm gonna do another one called Sega. This is the Sega Dream Raiders. So now I feel bad because I literally like recorded this like three times. <laughs> the first two times I accidentally pressed stream. So two, uh, two videos basically went to a Facebook live stream on this. Uh, this game is like kind of a game that you actually just to ride. It's got like a seat on it and I guess the seat moves. It's really not that great of a game. Um, I think it's a two player game or it might be a one player game. Um, this game doesn't utilize any, um, any reload. So I'll press two players on this. So again, as you can see there, like I guess there's like an actual emergency stop switch on the ride. So I have to press start to skip. I just don't know if this is a one player game or a two player game. We should see. Yep, it is a two player game. Cool, so you have to actually start the game. Let's do this lava coaster. So as you can see, like I could see the crosshairs. I like games like that where you can actually see the crosshair. But this basically, I could just literally kind of pull down the button. So again, one player is this yellow orange hue. Player two is this blue. And again, the way this game plays, I would assume that you're just riding in a car and it's moving. In all honesty, this is not that great of a game, but just for you guys to see it. I believe it was eight or nine games that are within Techno Parrot that utilize the gun. Might be maybe 10. One game does not utilize um, the mule shooter. Um, and I believe that was Rambo. I have that set up as Rambo. Uh, Rambo, I was able to get two players, but then it wouldn't recognize the shooting. Um, so again, right now, this is Dream Raiders. I've never heard of this game. But as you can see, like I'm not really taking any damage. Kind of defeats the purpose. Again, this is a game that's supposed to be a ride, I would assume. But there you guys have it, that's Dream Raiders. I'm gonna exit out. We're back into hyperspin. I'm able to use the controls. I'm gonna launch this one. This is Sega Golden Gun. So again, once I see the CMD, I'm good to go. We got the we got the guns in our hands, and we'll basically just kind of wait, and let it do its thing. This I do have set to two players. I don't think we need a reload button, but to be safe, we're gonna do one player. So right now, this is a um, set to free play mode kind of game. So now let me see, I think I might have an issue with this game. Let's just see. Yeah, so this game's kind of weird, it's funky. Right now, I can't do anything, it's disabled. If I exit out though, and I relaunch it, it should work. Basically, I could tell that the game didn't run because you should see a crosshair. Even outside of hyperspin, this game gives me an issue. Um, it's not that big of a deal, but you know, it kind of sucks that you have to kind of go back. Um, but for right now, we're gonna do it real quick. Again, I don't wanna show off fake stuff and, and you know, not really show the true stuff to it. So right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna press start. And it's not that it doesn't recognize the gun, it's just like the crosshair, it's, it's, it's kind of funky. Um, so at all in all, once we see the guy on the floor, we should see our crosshair. So no, we did it again. And like I said, in all honesty, there's usually a crosshair on the screen. So negative on that one again, let's bring it back one more time. Try it again one more time. If not, I will launch it outside of hyperspin just to show you that it does work. Let's 
try this again. So again, usually you do see, ah, oh, there it is, see? Now we have the crosshair, see that? Once you can see the crosshair, it's good. Even outside of hyperspin, this game, it just had that issue for some reason. Maybe I start too fast, I don't know. But right now, we're good to go on that. So this game, does it utilize a reload? There is a reload button, but it looks like once the bullets kind of run out, it just reloads up. So again, I could even use the third button and move back. Again, I'm utilizing Hello. There we go. Let's bring in player two. So I'm gonna have to move back. And there we go. See that? So we got player two. I'll bring in player one again. Might as well do dualies. So again, Sega Golden Gun, I, even beforehand I knew that crosshair issue. Just gotta restart it. And luckily this game doesn't take that long to load up. Rambo takes a while to load up, that gets kind of annoying. And again, I tried to do Rambo as two players and it just wouldn't recognize the gunshot. It would recognize the crosshair, but it wouldn't do the gunshot. So basically that is utilizing the use now as keyboard to pick up parrot. And my arms are getting tired. <laughs> So again, you could either like utilize the actual reload button. How many shots? <laughs> Shot that guy so many times. But again, aim track guns. I have no regrets so far with this techno parrot. I'm very sure man arcade should be an easy setup, and I think it will be much easier to use. You know the buttons. Um, again, just amazing stuff. And I went you know, extra level starting off with Techno Parrot. So again, no drivers needed. It literally recognizes it right when you plug it in. It's basically noticed as a mouse, so pretty cool. <laughs> I had to do that for the, I'm gonna do that for the thumbnail. There it is, that, that'll be our thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, the stuff that you guys done season nine is hilarious. Not a bad way. It's just you gotta you gotta see how many times I do records and stuff. <laughs> What's happening? I lost my focus. Which one? Oh, blue. Blue is player one. Pink is player two. Oh, I should have shot the gods, damn it. <laughs> Alright, so there you guys have it. That is Golden Gun. Let's escape out. Let's do, um... I believe it was a Let's Go Jungle. So, I just forgot which one. Let me see. Okay, Let's Go Jungle, the regular one. It is a two-player game, so you can use both um, guns on this. So we're going to let it load. So Let's Go Jungle Regular is a two-player game utilizing both aim tracks. Um, the other one is a one-player. So it's funny, you can actually see like my mouse is <laughs> confusing windows. But for right now, we're going to start with just one player. Okay, we're going to let it do its thing. It's going to load up. So you get the warning out of the way. So I can press start. Again, I'll start out with one player, because again, I don't remember if this utilizes a reload button. I doubt it does. But again, let's go jungle. It's just, it's, it's just a weird game. I don't know, there's a lot of people that like, like this game, but I'm not a fan of it. I could just skip. Okay, we skipped. 
Awesome. So as you can see right now, we got one player down. This game does not utilize any reload button, I can already tell. So I'll play player one for right now. Again, I'm basically able to just hold down the gun. That kind of sucks though, games like that, where you just kind of hold down. It kind of defeats the, the purpose of it, but you can see this kind of game, there's so much going on. I'll bring in player two. Cool. So I got player two in my hand now. I got player one. Just an interesting game, kind of odd. Let's go Island 2, I believe. I have that. I think that's set to use as a mouse. So that is a one player on that. So there is also like Let's Go Jungle Special. It's the same exact game, but only one player. So I was contemplating on removing it, but it's literally the same exact game, just one player. Right now, I am literally able to enjoy two player action on it. So Let's Go Jungle, the regular one, is two player accessible. There's so much going on on the screen. You're fighting bugs. The island one, you're fighting sharks. <laughs> and again, just holding the, the guns like this. <laughs> I'm just gonna get tired. I don't know what's happening. Okay, we don't have a steering wheel. <laughs> we missed, of course we missed. Oh, we actually could just point down. Okay, interesting. Again, so far, the aim tracks, I'm, I'm actually mind blown by them. I'm not gonna say it's an easy setup, but it's definitely not like that touch mode thing. I had to reload the touch mode and connect the Bluetooth. This is just so much easier. All right, so there you go. That's Let's Go Jungle. I'm gonna exit out. Uh, Luigi's Mansion, I definitely wanna show off, but again, I do have to show that off outside of Hyperspin. We could do Rambo. So again, I have Rambo set. It's only a one player game. Um, it's really two players. It's just, like as you can see, see I could, you see the mouse? Again, that's why I do like these aim tracks. So Rambo I do have set to one player. I could do two players, but it wouldn't recognize the gun. It wouldn't recognize the shot. Even if I changed the Ultimark settings to buttons, it still wouldn't do it. The only downside to this is that it does take like maybe a minute or two to boot up, because as you can see, it's gonna go through these phases. Okay, cool, so Rambo's in. So like I said, this is recognized as just like a mouse game, so you have to press start. The year is 1988. Press start to skip. I'm gonna do one more skip. Michael throws face. Okay, cool. So now this has like the crosshair, I can't, I can't take the cursor off. The crosshair might be a little bit off. So see, even as a mouse, it's still just like, it's just funky. Uh, also, I did download the shader. This did have like a bunch of white boxes. Uh, and I, ever since I downloaded the shader, it kind of spazzed out on the, on the controls. But as you can see, I mean, I'm getting a couple shots. Rage mode is on the left. 
So it's just, it's, I'll be honest, this one Rambo is kind of wonky. As you can see, I'm literally trying to shoot. It's weird, like I said, that's, Rambo I think is the only game I was having this difficulty with. But again, I, in the past, if you see the Wiimote video I did, you can see that there's a bunch of like blocks and explosions. So I did an update and then it looks like it kind of bricked out. So I'm gonna have to try to find a new kind of download. But as you can see, Rambo is an F kind of game right now. Even with the mouse. If I just take the regular mouse, for some reason it's just kind of wonky. I did try to recalibrate the guns. Uh, that you do have to go into the settings mode on all these and kind of do a calibration of the gun. So as you can see, it's like once I go up, I, I lose connection. But if I stay down, I'm not, I, I'm good. See, like if I stay there, but if I go up like to hit these guys, you now I'm good. I'm shooting this guy right in the chest. <laughs> Luckily it's at the free play. So again, it's like maybe. Okay, so right now we launched Luigi's Mansion outside. I probably lost audio and video, damn it. But it's okay, Luigi's Mansion does work great for some reason outside of Hyperspin. Inside of Hyperspin, as you saw before, like I wasn't able to get Luigi. It just kind of disappeared. So I'm gonna launch first uh, one player and then I go to two player because this game does utilize um, the other side mode as it is the flash. So right now, for example, if I can find my crosshair, leave it on normal. I do have to press start to continue. It's interesting that if you do two players, Luigi's second player is blue. I've never seen a blue Luigi, but basically once you get past that, you don't need to press the select button anymore. You utilize the gun and again, flashlight and trigger to vacuum. So I get to skip this. Awesome. I'm gonna just double check to make sure I'm still recording. Yes, good to go. So I'm gonna press start and real quick, as you can see, so if I pull the trigger, I can start vacuuming. And the right, I'm sorry, it's the left. Left will give out the flash first. So you do need two hands for this. So if I literally hit the left, come here. So you hit him, you pull, awesome. Great game, like this, aim track guns. I mean, if I was gonna do a gun cabinet game, the R would be based on this, to be honest. So I can skip this. Utilizing player one start. So again, we flash, we vacuum, we flash. Oh, come on, darn it. We vacuum, so again, you can just kind of vacuum up the sides, you get the coins. Oh, you can even charge the flash, I didn't know that. So if I hold down, you can see the charge, let it go. Got him. Good. Nice, cool. Come on, might have to hit him with a big flash. Yeah. Oh, and that's the surge button, cool. So there's a surge meter on the left. I'll put down player one for now. Press player two. I'll bring player two in. Again, I would love to do this um, with both guns in my hand, a Kimbo style, but I can't because we need the flashlight. Foya. So we could go second floor. Had to shoot it with the flashlight. Player two will make the call. <laughs> Pressing start, just to skip. So again, player one right now is just kind of on his own. Got to relocate my crosshair there. Okay, now there's a bunch of. <laughs> 
there's a bunch of characters now on the screen because we have two players. Again, great, like Luigi's Mansion, talking GameCube days. What a game that was. You can continue if you want, so I'm gonna press start. There we go. So again, this is set to uh, free play mode. So you don't have to worry about entering coins. Good stuff, I charge up the flashlight. I'm gonna leave my flashlight charged. Actually, no, I might have to use it for that. Yeah. I didn't get this far, I've never gotten this far. And it's a definitely a different feeling when you have the handgun in your hand. It's, it's a very good feeling. <laughs> Not to sound weird. <laughs> Alright, so that's Luigi's Mansion. Um, we have to just press escape on the keyboard. And the last game I will do is... I have one of these Let's Go Islands. I just did it. Let's see. Let's Go Island. Let me just make sure that it's running my command. No, it's not. So last one I said I'll do is this Let's Go Island. Um, this game is not utilizing the mule shooter, so it's just gonna be basically used as a mouse, use gun as the mouse, making sure that we are recording. And again, I, I have to add this game basically back to my hyperspin wheel now that we know that it works with the gun. So I can press start. I have it set to the actual gun. You could utilize either the left or the right. So I have the start button on the gun itself, so you don't actually need the arcade stick. Again, I am using player one, so I can skip. Might have to go into techno parrot settings to see if I could hide the crosshair. Not hide the crosshair, hide the mouse cursor. So again, this game, since it's utilizing um, the, the use gun as mouse, you can't do two players on this. I did try to get the mule shooter to work with this and it was just a nightmare. And it looks like this game, in all honesty, I might have to do a recalibration, which I'll do. Again, I'm just doing it for you guys to see on the video with the guns. And again, I have to put this back onto the hyperspin wheel. So there you guys have it again. Let's go island. All right, guys. So real quick, I just want to dab into this because it is—it's a known thing. You have to do it. You do have to calibrate the guns to you specifically. Everybody has different heights and such. And wherever you put the actual bar top, wherever you put the actual um, light bar, you do have to reconfigure these things. So I do want to like kind of screen grab this just to show Eugene and anybody that does you know get a like on um there's a couple things you have to do the big thing right now the video that was just posted basically was based on techno parrot and to get techno parrot and these guns to work for two players it's a little bit of a headache you do need a demule shooter program 
and there's a lot of configuring to it, especially if you want two players. If you do want like a single player thing, I can show you real quick what you could do, but I just want to kind of go over the recalibrating as no matter what, Eugene, when he does get this, he's going to have to calibrate. He might be taller than me. He might be shorter than me. He might have the bar top higher than me because in honesty, the video you saw, I do have the bar top low. It's lower than like desk height. Um, but before I do send it out to him, I'm going to recalibrate it to, you know, regular desk height, but he still would have to basically calibrate. Um, so basically all he's got to do is he goes here to the search bar and you just look up ulti, U-L-T-I. Oh, I'm using the wrong keyboard. <laughs> U-L-T-I. Once you put in ulti, you're going to find this, the ulti aim tracks. Um, so for me, it's really easy. You literally pick here. So device one is really player two. As far as the demule shooter, it's really player two. Um, and player one is really device two. Uh, basically, either way, you're going to have to calibrate both devices. So just do it. You literally go to device one and then you calibrate. For Eugene specifically, I left it here. There's literally a gun with a white sticker on it, at least on the top when I send it. This is, dev this is player one. So it's really device two. I know it sounds weird, but that's just how it is. You literally press calibrate. The arrow will go. You literally aim your gun. You pull the trigger. It's going to go to the top two corners and then dead center on the bottom. That's it. Once you get it, you literally exit out. And now your gun is literally calibrated. Um, that's really it. As far as, you know, Techno Parrot, it is running this program called Demule Shooter. Now, the big thing is that as far as shooting games, if you do try to launch this outside of Hyperspin, I have it set for Hyperspin, but outside of Hyperspin, you, can't, you shouldn't launch the game from here. As far as shooting games, it's really only shooting games. Um, the big thing is that I have to set Windows up to launch the Mule Shooter when a specific game is launched. So as you can see here on the bat files, like we have House of the Dead 4, uh, Let's Go Jungle. Luigi's Mansion. So this program needs to launch before you launch the actual game. All in all, basically, it's very simple the way I have it set up. But again, you would launch this within Hyperspin, but some people do like to see this. Uh, basically, within my Techno Parrot, I have all the bat files for the games to launch. And I'll just show you real quick for Luigi's Mansion. Um, and this, honestly, this is what Hyperspin launches. Um, if I go to edit here, you can see the bat file here. Here it is. Originally, it was just this, this Techno Parrot UI, but I had to add this line of code, which basically tells the system to launch the Mule Shooter Luigi's Mansion Arcade before launching Techno Parrot. I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to turn it on, and you're going to see like two or three CMDs pop up. So you can see that I do have Techno Parrot launching in the background. One is just for Luigi's Mansion to launch. The second one is for Demule Shooter to launch. So if I decide to actually close Techno Parrot, this launches, it's in the clear, and it's set. So again, now within Hyperspin, you'll see two CMDs boot up, but again, it's set, it's perfect. Uses the arcade button, so to exit, super easy, and again, it's great. So aim tracks, Techno Parrot. That was like the one thing I wanted to challenge first, and I did it like that is like expert level. That's very difficult to do. I should have probably done MAM Arcade first, but I believe that's easy. At least right now, Techno Parrot does work, and it's great. There's about maybe I think like eight games on it. Um, I have the whole list, so it's it's really cool as far as that. So I do want to go over one game in particular in this part. It's called Too Spicy. Um, it does need some modification if you don't like how I originally set it up. Um, so basically in real life, this game is a gun game and you have to actually run left and right behind pillars. Um, in real life, there's a, there's two pedals on the floor and you have to use your foot to move the pillar right now. When Eugene gets it, I do have this set up where basically the running left and right is set to the joystick. Um, it has to be set that way, but I really wanted to set it up where you basically use the left and right red buttons on the aim tracks. Unfortunately, I cannot set that up because it messes up all the entire game. So this real quick will be a tutorial on if you want to play too spicy, basically with the aim tracks. Again, I'm going to show a video of me playing it with the joystick, and then I'll do one right now of me playing it with the handguns. I unfortunately do have to get up, stand in front of the arcade, but just real quick, let's go over the settings that we have to do.
So the big thing right now is we go to the bottom and we look up again ulti mark, so ULT, and you'll see the aim track device. So it's only a one player game. Remember, one player, player one is really device two. And basically here, we have to change two things here. We have to change the left mouse button to be a button one and the right mouse button to be button two. That is it. Leave it as the trigger on left. Same thing here. We're going to go button one and we're going to go button two. Press apply changes. Now we're set. Originally, the aim tracks are set for left click, right click, and middle click. But for this game specifically, it does not recognize the clicks. It needs buttons. So once we have that set up, we exit out. We have to load up Techno Parrot. We're going to exit out of this. And basically, we're going to go to Too Spicy. So the TOO. We're going to go into Controller Setup. And basically, here now, the only thing we have to set up is Pedal Left. I'm going to press that as the left on the red. And then Pedal Right, I'm going to press that on the right on that. Leave the trigger blank. That's what it should be. You press Save Settings. You can't launch the game from here. We must go into the Techno Parrot emulator and then launch my bat file. And I'm going to put the headset down and you'll see the audio will come out of the speakers. Again, it's just a quick video just to show you. All right, so real quick, I want to just discuss this one game. It's only one game in this whole gun game as far as Techno Parrot that has this setting that might need some changing when you do get it. Um, it just has to be. It doesn't recognize something in the Mule Shooter. Uh, basically, the game is called Too Spicy. Uh, this game basically uses the left and right pedal like for you to run left and right. I'm going to show you the way it's going to be sent, um, and then I'm going to show you what you could do to modify it so that it's a little bit easier. Basically, the left and right pedal, when you do get it, it will be set to the joystick left and right. It just has to be, for some reason, the mule shooter is not doing a good job noticing it as a virtual keyboard command. So, again, I'm going to just show you what the gameplay looks like if you are playing it like that. So, this is a one player game, and as you can see, like there are two floor pedals, and you basically have to just avoid the character. So, I'm going to kind of go over, yeah. So luckily, wherever I am, I could actually even use it like here. You know, the gun does work right here. And basically, at this type of game, if I wanted to run left and right, I could still shoot and control. As you can see, the crosshair. Yeah, you can definitely see it. You can still see the crosshair and such. So again, I'm trying to do this so you can see it. So again, this is how it's going to be sent. So down on this, it's going to tell me go. I'm going to look out. So the real way I wanted it, where I wanted the button to go left and right, so you could run left and right. But again, the way that the mule shooter is set up, it just, it won't really work that way. Um, so right now, see if I wanted to run, I'm gonna have to run to the right, come back, and then I could kind of shoot it out. It's kind of cool. I mean, it does give you like a little bit of a perception on that. So if I wanted to run, I could go back. But really, while you run, you do want to kind of shoot up your person. So again, I can literally run and run at the same time. So as you can see right now, yes, I am using the left and right to make it work. I'm gonna basically go into the settings and again, I'll do a screen grab on how you can change the setting. Okay, so now I'm gonna do an actual proper shot with 
the gun right here so you can see how this game could really work well using the red buttons to move. So again, left, running left and running right. So we'll let this kind of play through. Okay, here we go. So again, I'm able to use the left and right to shoot. So crosshair off, I can come out. And now as you can see, I'm running using the red button. So come on out, I can run to the right. Good stuff. Oh. So again, using left and right. So as you can see, this game definitely is awesome playing like this. But again, you do need to do the setting in Ultimark. I evaded that. Oh, come on. So there you guys have it again, using the aim track gun to run. Okay, right, so that's really it for now. I mean, again, we got the double aim tracks for techno parrot working. The next one up I gotta do is basically MAM Arcade. And uh, to finalize it, I have to do the uh, Model 2 and Model 3 to get like House of the Dead 2 to work. So again, Vic VP Game Case Arcade.